Hi, I'm, my name's Nick, I'm from No Regrets Training and I've got my good friend Ken Drews from Royal Sydney um, and today we're going to talk to you about how do you increase drives, your driving distance, which is be probably one of the most popular things that I know Ken would get asked for and when we're working with golf players is probably the biggest thing that most people are searching to do. Now Ken's going to run through like a swing that it commonly looks like when someone's got a uh, tight hips because tight hips are usually the most common form of the reason why people won't get the driving distance they're looking for. It's not more lessons or better clubs or better balls for that matter, it's conditioning and it's usually flexibility problems. So Ken's going to give us a demonstration of like a, what he would usually see when he's doing some lessons at Royal Sydney and then he's going to run through a couple of his little tests and assessments and I'm going to show you a couple of the stretches. Then we're going to get him to hit the ball again and you'll see what it looks like when his hips are moving freely and you'll see why his driving distance is impeccable. All right, so I'll leave it, here's Ken, he's going to show us uh, a tight hip swing. Thanks Nick. One of the most common things I see in the golf swing is people who stand up on the back swing and they can't rotate their hips properly. And it more or less looks similar to this. They might top the ball or they might just run off to the side. So one of the things that I test them for is their hip, hip mobility. Um, and that is see if they can separate their upper and lower body. And the test is just see if you can turn, hold your, the club across your shoulders like this and see if you can turn your pelvis lower body without moving this. As that happens, that's the first movement on the downswing which produces a lot of power. Awesome. Okay, so now Ken's going to show us one of the exercises that he uses. This is sort of like a stability exercise, but we would probably regard it more as a mobility exercise. So we'll get Ken to lie on the ground. And you use this one quite a lot, Ken, with your players? Yeah, I use this quite a lot with my players. It suggests that you get your arms nice and parallel to your shoulders. Tuck it, a Swiss ball into your bottom there, and just go over to the side as far as you can, keeping your shoulders on the ground. Don't let your shoulders come up. And you'll feel a good stretch around your torso and around your hips, lower back. And how many would you get your, your um, students to do? Oh, you do 10 on each side. Yep. And then have a little breather. Okay, so, so that would be his first exercise. Now, I'm going to show you two stretches that we would follow up. Um, at times, there's probably as many as maybe five or six different hip, hip stretches, but for the sake of the video, we're going to show you our top two. All right, so Ken's going to go down onto the mat here. He's going to do the lunging stretch, hip flexor stretch, which is, which is the one that commonly done by people, but it's also commonly done poorly. So Ken's going to show you how to do it correctly. So step one, he's going to tilt his pelvis under. Step two, his abdominal muscle is going to hold the, that pelvis in place. And then step three, he's going to pull his right arm up with his other arm reaching over his shoulder there like that. So he's twisting up and away. And we're going to get him to hold that. You know, I sometimes might get people to hold that for as long as a minute, right? It just depends on the person. Now, the job's only half done because we need to stretch with the quad muscle as well because the muscle that in the thigh here, which is the main quad, is, um, is a muscle that's unique because it does this action, but it also does this action. All right, so we need to, when Ken's just done that stretch, he's stretched the top end of it, but we haven't got the bottom end. And quite commonly, we'll find people are worse at the bottom end than the top end, and which impacts both ends of the, of the joint, and it will affect the swing. So we'll get Ken to kneel on the floor. Now, most people have a problem with their knees, so find a mat that you can sort of squish up like this, gives you extra cushioning. And Ken's got to put that under his knee. He's going to go back in his position that he was in before. Puts both his hands on the ground. Lifts the back foot up off into the air. Then he tries to sit up straight. And if he's struggling to sit up straight, which some people do because they're so tight, we'll give them a stick to sit up straight. Now if Ken can do that, we can take the stick off him 
and we'll ask him to reach back behind and grab the ball with both hands and then gently squeeze the glutes to bring the hips forward more. Now Ken's getting a huge stretch through all the way right down from the top to the bottom. And again, we might get him to hold that for about a minute. All right, so, so we've done Ken's little mobility test. We've loosened it up, we've given it two stretches. Let's have a look at how his swing looks now and what driving distance he'll get out of his swing on this time. Now I'm feeling nice and mobile in the, in the hips. And if they fire, I should hit this. Wooshka! <laughs> oh, well done. And that's, so there you go. That's just one of our things in our golf performance coaching program. I'm sort of a trainer that's working in Melbourne and Ken's working in Sydney. Um, and some of the, all of this stuff is based around training the body. So Ken gives you, what's, some of the, what's your biggest frustration as a coach working at Royal Sydney when you see someone once a week? You know, and all that, and they don't do any practice on their own. You can't move the way I wouldn't like them. So yeah. they've got to get more mobile, a bit more stable, a bit more strength, and that leads to more powerful drives, more consistent. So is it all about getting more lessons from you, or is it more about improving their body? So mostly, you know, a bit of both. You know, improving the body's a massive part. So there you go, that's coming from a guy who's played in the tour, he's a touring professional, and he's telling you that, that improving your body is extremely paramount to where you want to get your, improving your distance. So I hope that video helps. Um, stay tuned because we'll have heaps more.